Well, praise the Lord and welcome back to Nightline. I sincerely pray that you enjoyed Kimberly Hardman as much as I did and our discussion with her concerning the peace of God that passes, transcends, surpasses all human understanding and comprehension, the kind of peace that can only come from the Lord. In fact, tonight, if you are without that peace and you'd love somebody to pray with you or pray for you, we have phone prayer partners and counselors who are more ready, willing, and able to do just exactly that than we could ever even begin to say. We are honored this evening to have on the program with us, as I mentioned earlier, Keith Wonderboy Johnson. And I'm going to introduce him to you in just a minute. But uh, before I do that, he's going to come now around with a song entitled Angels. You ought to be able to look back over your life and know that you have an angel watching over you. I know I got an angel watching over me. Keeping and protecting me through dangers I cannot see. There's blood from head to toe Keeping an angel to watch over me Wherever I go I know got an angel traveling here. Kept my children at home safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ought to think of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands wherever you're at right now and tell the Lord, thank you for watching over me. Or something have there ever been a time you was riding in your car and another car came out of nowhere and just missed you it wasn't your good luck it wasn't your good driving but it was an angel it was an angel ah! it was an angel watching over you ah! now if you know you were here by the grace of God well you at right now, what I want you to do, lift your hands, open up your mouth, and tell the Lord, yeah, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, yes, all the Lord want is, all the Lord want is, yes, yeah, tell the Lord, yes, tell the Lord, yes. A couple of years ago, when 9-11 happened, it was personal to me. I love my daddy, but Lord knows I'm a mama's boy. 
and my mama worked in a World Trade Center. When I saw it on the news, I said, it's real, people dying up in there. I called my mama, and she didn't answer. Then I kept calling, I was worrying, and all of a sudden, I got mad, and my mother, and the phone rung. When the phone rung, I picked it up with an attitude. I said, who is this on the phone? Then I heard an old-fashioned voice say, why don't you talk to your mama like that? I, I had to lift my hand and say, thank you! Ah, thank you for watching over her. If you know it watched over you right now, just give God a praise. Give him a praise. Well, thank God for that song and thank God for that music, but even more so thank God for that message. Even the angels of the Lord are worshiping Him. They're praising Him even right now. And you and I can stand on that promise from the book of Psalms that says, The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear Him. I'm so grateful for the ministry of angels. And I'm even more grateful for the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ who ever lives to make intercession for us. And he does that day and night forever and ever. Well, we've got Keith Johnson back over here on the set. And brother, it is an honor to have you here on Nightline tonight. Thank you for having me. I think appreciate it. Brooklyn, New York. That's your home. Brooklyn, New York. How's, every, how's everything in Brooklyn at your home church? Cold. Cold. <laughs> Cold. But God is still good. God is good. We were talking uh, earlier when we first met about mm -hmm. this past New Year's Eve right. in, in Brooklyn, in New York City. Record cold. Record breaking. The, on record, the coldest New Year's Eve ever. But there's a still small spirit of God that keeps speaking to you and telling yes. you to just keep on doing what you're doing, right? Yes, yes. Regardless of the weather. Yes, regardless. Actually, the title, one of the songs I have in the title of my new CD coming out March of uh, 2018 is called Keep Pushing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'd love to hear that. But I've just got to ask you this, brother. Uh, where in the world? Did you get that nickname, Wonder Boy? Well, it came at a time period when I started singing when I was five years old. Uh huh. And at that time, in church, in church, and then I started singing with my my uncle and my dads. They had a, a group called the Spiritual Voices. Yeah. And at that time, it was popular for a little boy to sing along with the you know adult men. So at the time, after that time, the, the little boy would become like the main feature. So uh, it would usually be the, their first name, Little, and whatever their uh -huh. first name would be. Uh -huh. So my dad, uh, Phil Johnson, and then my godfather, who was the manager, Johnny Martin of the Mighty Clouds of Joy. Heard they, of them. They wanted me to be different. So instead of calling me Little Keith, they came up with a nickname Little Wonder Boy. How about that? Mm. How about <laughs> that? And you've had it all these years. Yes. All these years. In what way would you say, Keith, that God has allowed you to impact the nation with with the gift and the ministry of music? I also I just believe that like it's I'm just, my ministry is for like the family, for the whole family. Mm to, you know, worship and fellowship together yeah. through music. And because uh, I do a little bit for the grandma, I do some songs for grandma, then I do some songs for the parents, then I also have some things for the children, the youth. So I just bring it all together for one. What, what would be something you'd do for grandma? Well, one of my actual first single to national single was an old song called Hide Behind the Mountain, and we recall it, we call it Chilly Winds. Love it, love it, love it. How about for today's 
youth, what, what would be something you'd do for them? Well, this song, Keep Pushing, is to encourage, especially the youth, to let them know whatever you're going through, whatever you're thinking about, despite, don't let people steal your joy. Mm. Put God first, and whatever you want to do, just keep pushing. Don't give up. Especially since we, we're here now, even about young children who are battling depression. Yes. And, and some people laugh that off and say, well, there's nothing that they have to be depressed about. But I, yeah. I think the approach you're taking, uh, confronting it compassionately yes. with the gospel is a whole lot more effective than just saying, that, well, there's nothing that they can be depressed about. Right. That's not true. That is not true. Whether it's from, you know, as compared to when, when we were coming up. Sure. You know, you see there's, there's big advertisements on just bullying, the fact of bullying. They take it to a whole nother oh, level, yeah. level now. Yeah. And, you know, that, that helps when it comes to self-esteem and building self-esteem and the youth and everything. All that plays a part. So we can't just push it to the side. I, I totally, totally agree with you. Has there been something in recent in recent days that God has used to just really, really, really remind you that he's called you for a time such as this, mm -hmm. some type of affirmation or confirmation? Yes, well, uh, recently, uh, uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation yeah. contacted me. And there was a young man in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, stricken with sickle cell. Yeah. And, you know, make a wish for him. They give him any wish they want. And he wanted to meet me. Seriously. So I went to How Milwaukee and met him. And then to see him now, you know, the Lord has you know, restored his body. And, it's a, and he's a musician. He plays almost every instrument. He's singing. And it's just something where to know that, you know, through your ministry, the Lord, you know, have you to inspire people like that. That was a real touching moment for me. Well, I just imagine it, it would have had to have been. That's a blessing. How about reaching other people by providing them the opportunity to do what you're doing? You you impress me as that as that kind of brother yes. that's not just all about yourself, right. but you're obviously about pouring into other people. How are you doing that? Well, uh, st I the start of my career, um, I, pro I, I made a vow to the Lord. Yeah. And I was like, it just felt like in my genre, it w nobody was helping each other. Right. So I, I asked the Lord, I said, if you bless my ministry, I will always be the type of person that helps someone. So when it comes to my band and the people that surround me, I always give that person that nobody gave a, a chance to. Uh -huh. I give them a chance. So one of my young men, one is, uh, he's now a professional guitarist, started out in Goldsboro, North Carolina. He had nothing on his resume, but now he's playing for uh, all the C.C. Winans and Donnie McClurkin, and he was on the uh, musician staff for uh, the late, great Andre Crouch. And that's one example. The other, another man, it was his, his dream to be a producer. He now produces for Malico Records. And uh, now, and then I started my own record label. Tell me about that. And it's called Timeless Music Records. And then my second release, my first release, we were, were blessed to go on and win some awards, specifically the Stella Award. And then I released a new CD called Indie Praise Project. What it is, hmm. is 18 different independent artists. So what I'm doing, I'm actually not just promoting my own ministry, I'm promoting their ministry too. I'm, I'm so, so interested in, in the concept of adding value to other people. And uh, to me, just from where I see it and from what I see, that is what motivates you. Yes. And that's the passion God's given you. Yes. And it honors the Lord Jesus Christ. And I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. What would you say to that uh, young artist, male or female, who uh, really does believe that God has appointed them and anointed them to do what you're doing? And right now, it just seems like uh, they're, they're stuck. Mm -hmm. Not that they're looking for fame or notoriety or or prosperity or anything like that, but they they just want to 
get beyond their borders. Mm -hmm. But right now, they're kind of uh, at a place that they're wondering, are any doors ever going to open? What would mm -hmm. you say to them? First, they have to know it's all in God's timing. Good word. All in God. And then you have to know that you're called to do this. And there's a few steps that I just advise that you take. You have to have, one, your own, your own personal relationship with the Lord. Two, you must have a church home and a pastor that knows what you're doing, mm. that's feeding you. And then, of course, you have to, you know, follow those those golden rules and pay your tithes and your offerings and support your church. And then be patient and be original. Be yourself. Nobody can tell your story like you. Brother, I'm not just saying this to you, but you need to write that down, <laughs> and you need to you need to send that out, mm -hmm. because see, those are the kind of things that that they would expect for, from a pastor or a preacher. Mm -hmm. But uh, to, be, to be totally, totally transparent, we don't hear that mm -hmm. a lot from musicians. Mm -hmm. But you gave some of the greatest wisdom there, especially getting under the covering mm -hmm. of a local congregation mm -hmm. and under the authority of that pastor mm -hmm. and paying your tithes. Must. Must. It's a must. Well, Keith, in balancing your family and ministry mm -hmm. and traveling mm -hmm. as you do, because that's what God has, has uh, no doubt called you to do, what's the key well, to maintaining that balance? The, the love of God and the love of your family. You have it in basically time management. You got to have it, have it down to teach you discipline to be time with your time management. So I know if I know this certain time I have to be on the road, this certain time I have to uh, be, uh, you know, with my family, or this time I, I do everything in the time management because that's, one, that's your first ministry. I have two lovely daughters. One is 14, one is 16. So I specifically just take time out with them and they get, they, you know, they're teenagers so they get in a, I don't care, I just sit in their face and tease them all day. But they yeah. realize I know it's my duty to be their father, not their friend. We've got just a few minutes left and then you are going to go back and sing one more song. Okay. But I want you in the next couple of minutes to just encourage a lot of our viewers mm -hmm. who are right now, even as this program mm -hmm. is being aired, facing some extremely troubled times. What mm -hmm. would you say to them? Well, what, what's going on with our today's time today? I would encourage them first, you got to keep God first. You got to keep him in the head of your life and do not let anyone steal your joy. Don't let no one speak negative into your life. Mm. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. First thing you got to do is put God first. Don't give up. And you got to keep pushing. Mm. As long as the Lord wake you up, you always have the opportunity and the chance to do whatever you want to do. In light of our scripture for this evening, Keith, where the word of God says that we can have that peace that passes all understanding and it'll guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. How can you describe that peace to somebody who really doesn't even know the Prince of Peace? Mm -hmm. Going back to the advice that you gave to uh, your, your peers and even uh, the next generation about just making sure that you're saved. That's it. Speak to that person uh, who's interested in the things of God, but they may not even really be saved. They may not even be sure that they're saved. Mm -hmm. Well, first you have to, once you claim Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, mm -hmm. that changes everything, then sometimes you have to think, just like the saying, when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's, all he's done for you. Right. So be real with yourself. Look in the mirror. Yeah. Think about it. Get realistic with yourself. Think about the times. Then you start seeing the different times that the Lord stepped in and worked a miracle. Whether, whether you was in a car accident and you came out scratch free. Right. And you know 
that that car was totaled. So that meant it could have been worse. Or you look at something on the news and see something that happened unfortunately to somebody, and you realize that could have been you. Or if you're a parent, that could have been your child. That could have been your mother, your father. You just, or sometimes you just got to just sit there and think. Mm. And you would just say, wow, God is good. Going back to the days of Andre Crouch and, of course, the Winans. And, and I'm going to just confess to you, brother. Sometimes I sit down and I still listen to Mahalia Jackson. Mm-hmm. It encourages me to see you carrying on not just that tradition, but that torch yes. of truth and ministry. Yes. Would you be willing to uh, step over there in just a moment and sing one more song? You got it. Okay. While Keith is going that way, I just want to thank you for being a part of this nightline. Did you know that, that we love you? Now, that sounds kind of cheesy to a lot of people, <laughs> but it's the truth. But I want to tell you something that's better than that. Beyond that, God loves you. He really does. God loves you just exactly the way that you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the way that you are. That's why he gave us Jesus. Jesus Christ is almighty God. Keith Johnson's going to come back around now, and he's going to sing... Almighty God, you be blessed as my brother sings us off the air. I need everybody, help me give them some praise. An old fashioned song that helped me say, oh, Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. I, I want you to. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you need. Talk to the Lord. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you need. Tell the Lord. Tossing and turning, tossing and turning, tossing and turning all night long. Tell the Lord, give me peace, peace of mind, so I can sleep late at night. Tell the Lord, run me. Somebody out there, the doctor gave you a bad report. The doctor said it might be cancer, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, might be lupus. All you got to do, don't get on your telephone. Tell the Lord, heal me.
God to stop looking at me and help me pray so loud out there, everybody. Let me hear you clap those hands. Come on and clap those hands up. Clap those hands for Jesus. Now life and death lies in the tongue. So speak it in the atmosphere. Tell the Lord. Somebody, you need to text, text somebody, tell them God's gonna do it, God's gonna do it, God's gonna do it, not next week, not next month, not next year, right now, right now, right now, right now, do you believe it, do you believe it, you ought to praise, praise a man in advance, now if you believe it, give him some praises with your hands, come on. Oh! Open up your mouth and give him a praise. Seal that blessing with a praise. You are there. Tell him hallelujah. 